at night and we are drinking wine. wine. We have found the ultimate Harry Potter tag. I'll put the link down below. And then also, <laughs> no, cat, <laughs> please no. <laughs> cat. <laughs> Can you not? So we've picked, we've picked and choose which questions we thought would be the best ones to answer and would prompt the best discussion and then also some rapid fire questions at the end. So without Ooh, any further ado, let's do this. Let's do it. What is your favorite book? Shannon? Oh, I was prepared to be first. Um, okay. Uh, I feel like it's a bit of a cheat to say Deathly Hallows because that was so, is the epicness of the end. Mm -hmm. So, for me personally, and this may come up in another answer, I enjoyed Half-Blood Prince a lot. When I was 16, I was reading the sixth one and Despite it being Hogwarts, I was like, yes, teenage angst years, but not it like the fifth, not the fifth book where he's just angst, angst, angst. Yeah. It was the sixth book. I really enjoyed how it was day to day life at Hogwarts up until the end when shit hit the fan. Yes. So she I'd did. probably say Half Blood Prince. And for me, I think nothing beats the feeling of reading the Philosopher's Stone for the first time and like realizing that you've been completely sucked in. Mm -hmm. So I think. That one always has a special place in everybody's okay. heart. It's true. Yeah, and yeah. Um, I actually really enjoyed the Order of the Phoenix, like watching the Dumbledore, like everything about the Dumbledore's army unfold, and I liked seeing right. their training for that. And it's it's something that you don't see in in detail in the movies. Again, I feel like that's Getting going on to a different question. Um, but yeah, but just seeing how they end up coming together and teaching each other things and and coming together there. It's nice to see the fifth one get a bit of love yeah, because it I gets know. rat on a lot, and I'm I'm yeah. one of them. So it's nice yeah. to like someone who like finds the good qualities in that one because it it's not a write up of a book. It's no, a, they're no, all it's great, a, like lovely book. Yeah, it's it, just but, like, <laughs> there's a, a lot of it. So like. Not my favorite book, but I do always remember that being something that I really loved. Mm -hmm. So yeah. Um, for me personally, I think it's the third one. I really like the whole, this is happening, and when, before Harry and Hermione go back in time, trying to figure out the timeline of what's happening, yeah, yes. and then everything unfolding after they go back in time, and they're just sitting there and watching, like, uh, mm -hmm. Peter Pettigrew get away, and they're yeah. watching Snape run into the um, Whomping Willow and just Harry having to sit there and go, my godfather is going to jail and is like gonna have his soul sucked out and I can stop it, but I can't. That scene was so amazingly written too, yeah. that you, you vividly saw it as yeah. you were reading it. And time travel had never been done in Harry Potter before. I mean, there was only three books at that point, yeah, but yeah. it was a totally new thing yes. and it totally took me by surprise when they're like now we're gonna time travel it's well written how the perspective changes like mm -hmm. not just perspective but how harry goes from being like oh this evil guy who broke out of prison to being like there goes my god total 180 yeah. yeah and just how much he his life changes for that like half an hour That's hour true. he's like i'm leaving the dursleys everything's gonna be happy i'm getting a family again Aww. and now i'm sitting here hoping this guy doesn't die yeah that it is just all on him, and he's only like 13 years old. Yeah, and, and just, you forget you that forget that, that yeah. realization. I think of me like, at 13. I'm like, I would not have been able to handle that nearly oh, as well. Oh, yeah, really the head. The kid's gone through some shit. <laughs> <laughs> Least favorite book. We kind of touched on this a little. Well. I wouldn't say the fifth is my least favorite. Okay. I'm I'm an, I'm in the majority of what you hear is the second book. I yeah, did yeah, not. Same. Did not enjoy it. I I should read it again to remember why I don't enjoy I it. I just I, read it. Okay. I just because I was yeah. reading the illustrated versions yeah, so. and it's just they're like they're twelve. Yes, but they're still like Hagrid did it because this book told me that Hagrid is the reason why this is all happening. It's just mm. it's an awkward not filler book because later it has 
really important thing. Yeah. And it I does. think I came to appreciate it after the seventh one. That's true. Yes. Because the whole time I was like, this is a filler book. The first one is like introduction to the world. The third one is when Sarah is black. Mm -hmm. And just the second one, I never was, I was like, bleh. What yeah, is like this? Yeah, the third one you get um, the fear of Voldemort coming to back. Uh, yeah, coming back which is to weird power because Voldemort Black runs away. Yeah, yeah. which is yeah. weird because Voldemort doesn't make an appearance in that book. No, it's but only, it's, yeah, yeah. there's the fear of it yeah. because everybody impending. thought that Black was yeah. Voldemort's biggest supporter. So the whole book is riddled with. <laughs> <laughs> that was a very intended pun, and I'm so happy. Well done, Lind. But it's quite just, good. Yes. Quite good. <laughs> Thank you. So. Thank you. But yeah, it has all the Voldemort references in it. That's where true. in the second one. They don't as much, and then it's Tom Riddle, and so and you're, you're like, like, who is this did do what? Yeah, and you just you very yeah. quickly get the oh he is Voldemort, but he's not because he has no idea who Harry is, yeah. right? Like he learns from Harry through Ginny, so you're yeah. like, mm -hmm. it's a weird just... book. Redeeming quality about Chamber of Secrets though is that I always found it so interesting that at such a young age he found similarities between him and himself and Tom Riddle. Mm -hmm. Is that so interesting because it becomes again it becomes mm -hmm. so important later important, on, yeah. and they're like I, Gilderoy Lockhart is one of the most entertaining oh of God. the Defense Against the Dark Arts teachers. With so the it's like Valentine's I, Day thing. Yeah, like there's there <laughs> are redeeming qualities mm. in Chamber of Secrets. I think just as an overall story, and then maybe them where they were as twelve year olds. I just didn't find the characters interesting yet. Yeah, no, they were. Like, yeah. They were they're still like impressionable youth. I, I don't know. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I like I do need to revisit it though. It, yeah, it's like it's worth the read when you read. Yeah, it, obviously. Okay. So are we u unanimous that the second book? The second one. Yeah. 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 Sorry. But any any honorable mentions? I mean, the fifth. We the kind fifth of... is just dredgingly long. Yeah. Like yeah. Umbridge is hating everybody. Everybody hates their life, yeah, and Umbridge then like. Just... The owls are happening, so just all so they're doing things. is studying, and then you yeah. have Fred and George, like, we're gonna set off fireworks now, and it's this amazing scene, but it's one scene, and you're like... That's true, the entire okay. year is plagued by owls. It's all about exams, it's all about the drudging day-to-day yeah. -day schoolwork, which I get was the point yeah. she was trying which to Which is prove. also, yeah, it's yeah. a school, or school. So right, it's that just... In, yeah. And you have thick. that mixed with them all going, Umbridge is incompetent, mm -hmm, so we're yeah. gonna start this army, which is amazing, but it's just, yeah. we so go to Harry's class, then we go to her class, then we go to Harry's class, it's like, okay, The yeah, fifth is an honorable mention. Yeah. class. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, honorable mention for sure. Yeah. Favorite movie? Prisoner of Azkaban. Yep. Yeah. And I, I don't know if it was just the change in director that did it. I think it had yeah. a lot to do with that it, because Alfonso yeah. Cuaron is just... Amazing. Mm. I like how he added the um, fact that the students, or the actors, were able to influence their own wardrobes. When they're in class, when they're the Care Magical Creatures class is when I see it most. You have Neville who's like, uniform is... Yeah, their uniforms are perfect. Yeah, and then and then and got his rolled up and he's kind of a mess. Yeah, and yeah. yeah. this is like... Mm -hmm. It's like everywhere yeah. and you're like, you see their personalities and it's like, that's what they would be. I yeah. think it was with, I mean, Chris Columbus set the stage really well yes, with the first two. It needed to be this British school and we're little wizards and we're off to magic places. But the third one is where thing, reality starts to set in about the situation and the aesthetic of the first two does not work with that no. story. The aesthetic of the third film. No. So, and that's I think where and I'm so impressed. Made, yeah. yeah, so impressed with how Alfonso Cuaron set that tone for the rest of the series. Mm -hmm. Yes, we got the other director's flavor, but he set that sort of off the wall, things are not quite perfect, everything is slightly yeah. crooked. Um, all the time. Mm -hmm. but, but that end freeze frame shot yep. haunts my days <laughs> in so many ways yeah. and will crush me. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But, but um, overall general aesthetic, that is a movie that like a beautiful fall rainy day, that's mm -hmm. what I want to be watching. And that's yeah. the same, and they got that same aesthetic actually in the video game too, which I played a lot okay. when I was younger. Um, so it's my favorite video game to play too, but it just has that that cozy rainy yeah. afternoon mm -hmm. feeling, and that's yeah. like what I want to watch. It's a more realistic take on like Northern England, yes. Yeah. Than, ooh, yeah. Warm. And it worked really yeah. well with the story of Sirius mm -hmm. Black. So it's like the it, aesthetic of it. Things was are darker. Forced. Things was... have become darker. It's more serious. Yeah. Also, the music in the third one stands out to me yep. so much that. 
not yeah. harpsichord, but whatever it is, and yes. the double, 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 yeah. whatever. <laughs> the, the frog <laughs> choir. Flip like the composer. Uh, trouble, trouble. Yes. Yeah. yeah, just that music in general. <laughs> did you just. <laughs> did you cry? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> it's the greatest ending to the song. I'm sorry. It had to, had to be in. You got to. So. So I mean, yeah, that was definitely my yeah. favorite, and it sounds to me like yeah. It was oh yeah, it was that's what I was gonna say. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, and then honorable mentions. Um, Half Blood Prince again, I think for I just being that really more cheery. Enjoyed it. Yeah, it's funny. It's like that I, cheery. Well, thing. okay, you so did it. I did not. Like I, you I don't like it. Yeah, I knew. I knew one of you didn't. I, I did didn't want to say, but yeah, like, I it loved it. <laughs> we'll get into that with the next it's question. My, yeah, it's my like just, goat. Mm. It, it feels there was that fan vid, the rom com version of the yeah. Half Blood Prince, but that's legit how I feel about it I because I'm like. It's them having parties in the common room yeah. and them just letting loose a little yeah. bit more. And you see, finally, the actors start acting. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Is it the sixth one with the. Yes. <laughs> yeah, okay, that is one that of my all time favorite best scenes. moments. Yes. <laughs> and I find for me. Harry! Sarah! <laughs> sir. uh, like, that is comedic gold in my mind. Yes. That scene. <laughs> Yeah, any interaction between Harry and Slughorn is just like the most awkward but most genuine teacher student oh, that's reaction. That's when McCloggan came in too. Corey, yes. Yeah. Yes. And he vomited on Snape's shoes. Like, <laughs> just everything about it is this teen movie it's that I so just. If teen, it's before the magicians existed, but like yes. teens and magic was yeah. the sixth movie. I think that one also mm -hmm. was like everyone got hot in that movie. True. <laughs> that is a good everyone part of that movie. Everyone got hot in the Half Blood Prince. Okay, but we yeah. agree on and that. And then still. they that was the last one. They tried so hard to keep Neville pudgy, and then in the <laughs> just, they just gave Hallows, up. they were like, "Hello, sir. I see you." My tertiary mention is uh, part two, Deathly Hallows part mm -hmm. two. It's just how they handled a lot of what happened i just write in the feels the entire time yeah and the uh, soundtrack for that movie too yes. i yeah. skated to that actually yeah. so it was yeah Ooh, so, so that's so like good. my number three and mm -hmm. if is this part two of deathly hallows yeah least favorite movie eh the mm. sixth one i really don't like the sixth one yeah Yes. Oh, I don't yes. like- Is it almost for the same reason that we like it? Is I, it's too cheery? I- No, it's not too cheery. I don't like rom-coms. Do you just hate all things good Oh, you don't like rom-coms? I don't like <coughs> rom-coms, so there is so much of that in there, and there is, um, like, when Ginny and, uh, Hermione oh, are sitting at, like, the love potion, and uh, like, oh, okay. Do, do, yeah, a bit cringy do. at They're standing points. there, and it's so pink and fluffy, and then you That's have- the point, though. It yeah, is, and yes, you- yeah. That is the point to it, but then you have that with- the Weasley's house catching fire randomly. Well, that was in the yeah. Six, that, that was the sixth seven? one. Yeah, yeah, that was Harry the sixth one. That's why I always kind of get it confused. And like, when does their house randomly catch fire? Yeah, because it doesn't why? catch fire. But that aside from okay. it, it's just a weird. I just I don't understand the juxtaposition to it, okay. where it's like it's so happy and bubbly, and we're trying to be like these students to it, but then all of a sudden the house burns down and it's like dark and mm -hmm. like rawr, and then happy and bubbly, and then you have <laughs> Harry trying to like figure out the things with Slughorn. They're going. That There's a lot with... that they had to pack into that movie. Yeah. There's just, so it's, much it could be disjointed. Yeah. And yeah, and I understand it is a really hard both book and yep. movie to do because. Um, the flashbacks in Tom Reynolds life it's you're trying to move, uh, yeah. move a story forward where the plots constantly taking you back in time so it is a really hard thing to do and I get that but it's still just uh -huh. uh, Chamber of Secrets is my least favorite story but mm -hmm. I felt the movie did it very good justice because they fit the entire book in the movie which is they like, did. the only yeah. one it's that very they did. it's very true, it's to, the true book. to the book but I don't feel that's the fault of the movie so I'd probably say Goblet of Fire. Thank you. I hate their hair so much. Oh my god. You can always tell what year they're in based on their hair. That... And they went through that weird shaggy phase, which, which was wasn't... the fourth one. If you're thinking about it, which isn't really 80s hairstyles. No, it was the current hairstyle yes. happening in 2004. Six, or <laughs> whatever. Awful. Um, Awful. No, it drove me up the wall. Because, yeah. And I, sorry, hate David Newell's 
directing. Mm -hmm. I I did not, after having Alfonso Cuaron and his weirdness, going back to, oh, we're British and we wear little jumpers and oh, yeah. we're going to be British now. Yeah. I just, I, it really was a step back for me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That being said, like, Cedric was great and Fleur and, and how they did Crumb and, and all of that stuff, cool, but just the actors were going through a really awkward time in yeah. trying to be actors, and <laughs> and also their growing hair up in puberty and, and puberty, yeah, and, and I can mean, see it's so awkward. It's just there's so yeah. I I kind of cringe. But I think for me as a book purist, I remember initially not feeling very favorably about the Order of the Phoenix too, but the Goblet of Fire because yeah. they had left so much mm -hmm. out detail wise. Which well, is... if you look at the difference in size between just the third yeah. one, the fourth one, like. But then mm -hmm. not only that too is that they actually considered back before doing part one, part two was a thing in mm -hmm. franchise movies. They actually considered splitting the fourth I remember movie that. into two movies. Yep. Which would have given us more in the way of book content, but ultimately I Ooh, agree yeah. with them keeping it down to one. Yeah, movie. I was gonna say because they, they would have done that continuously for the rest of the series. Yeah, and that just it would have like they would have still been making movies today if that oh, were the case. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so I just remember walking away from that one feeling underwhelmed a little bit and not completely satisfied. Yeah. But then the more I watched it afterwards, I was like, okay, this is cool, this is cool, but it never reached that, like, this is my favorite movie. Like, I, it'll yeah. never top Prisoner of Azkaban for me. No. Should we cheers? Should we cheers? Oh, yeah! Oh, yeah. Cheers! Yeah. Yay! Take Yay. water! I'm halfway done mine, it's fine. <laughs> favorite female character? Oh, no, I didn't actually think about this. Yeah, no, me neither. Uh... Oh god. Um, I really like can we talk? Yeah. Badass. Badass witch. Just, 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 she's so badass. Badass, badass witch. Like she she does all this stuff, but it's just sort of she never gets the mention of her. Right? She's it's so just, chill about it. Like she's yeah. that person who does so much behind the scenes and is like rooting for everybody but is like super chill about it. And she's like she's super stern with her students all the time. Yeah. She never favorites any of them. Well she favorites she's like Harry occasionally with like the Quidditch team and stuff like that. But She's good at her job. She yeah, she doesn't like Snape is always like, We'll take points off Gryffindor because I like my feel like to it win. today. And she's like, We take points off Gryffindor because you're being a little shit. She wants her students to excel and I think that's mm -hmm, mm -hmm. a really important thing to show for her. Well I love some of my character. favorite just character scenes is um when she's coaching Harry about careers. I love that conversation where she's like trying to see like the best in his order qualities, but like you also have to work hard if you want yeah. to do yes. this. And not only that, but like you do have a future. What do you want to do yeah. with it? Like yeah. That is that is that whole thing. Is that she always she always believed in him and mm -hmm. always pushed him. Yeah. And I really like it you don't see it at all in the movies, but in the books, her with Professor Trelawney. Mm -hmm. Yeah, she. Yes. They have this weird little. She openly hates her, right? Because she doesn't mm -hmm. believe in divination. So, like, when uh, she she doesn't hate her, she, she doesn't, doesn't teach appreciate but... her style of magic. Mm -hmm. I guess you could say. So, yeah, when she comes down for Christmas dinner mm -hmm. and no one expects her to come, McGonagall's sitting there and she's like, "Oh, imagine that! You saw yourself arriving at the dinner. You didn't just. <laughs> yeah. You also see those faults in her as well." Mm -hmm. And something I actually liked in the movie is when the, the sacking of Trelawney is it's it's McGonagall consoling her, yes. going, no, you can't just kick someone out onto yeah. the street. She knows when to put her foot down, and yeah, I yeah, always yeah. love yeah. female characters that, mm -hmm. or just characters in general, that stick up for themselves. And you see that with Neville, too. Yeah. Oh, in, the, in the first, yeah. So many thoughts on Neville. Yeah, so, but, so we can get to that again yeah, later. later. But I love characters who know when it's time to stand their ground and, yeah. and really stand up for what they believe in. And Book Ginny oh my goodness. has a head on her shoulders yep. and is just witty she and she clever is. and she, is she the ideal. <laughs> yeah, and I get not my favorite character, but mm. there's there's elements that Ginny has in the books that I yeah. was like, this is wonderful. Yeah. And the movies happened. Uh -huh. I mean <laughs> Wow! <laughs> Yeah, favorite female character. Um, in terms of redemptions, Fleur is very interesting. Yes. Because yes. she is the flightiest, flighty beauty pants. You love to hate her. You love yeah. to hate her, or you just, you, you know that girl. We all know that girl. Yeah. Um, but it's, it, it's interesting how, well, her and Molly spar. 
And, so much. But, and at first you're like, yeah, she's real annoying. But then you hear Fleur's side where she's like, I just want to fit in and I really do love Bill. And I'm always like, you're gonna just leave. Why are you marrying him? And Fleur just stands there like, I'm pretty enough for the two of us. I don't <laughs> give a shit. But I, I love, love, that I love both of us. <laughs> that that scene just... in the books. Mm -hmm. not in, it's not in the movie. But no. I love that because that is Fleur's redemption where she stands so her ground and she's like, I don't care that he looks like this that's not why I love him I'm gonna take care of him mm -hmm. and then you see her in the following book and she's you know integrating herself into the family and mm -hmm. you see how she goes from being you know a 17 year old in the fourth book yeah. to like yeah. a 20 year old mm -hmm. who's matured and who's not afraid to so I around. I not that Fleur is like oh I love Fleur she's such a great character we only see her three times yeah. but I did like in the times we saw her you could see there was a her change. maturing you saw a lot of character and then grow. you and then you see from everyone's per outside perspective of like oh Fleur she's that flitty beautiful woman mm -hmm. seeing her side of it and giving her that voice I was like okay good girl yeah yeah Luna was always a personal favorite for me oh, Luna. Um, Luna yeah so I mean she's just. She, Luna. she doesn't fit in and she loves it. She's just your typical nerd and like us. Like she <laughs> just does not care and is excited Oops. about things yeah. unabashedly. She's yeah. not all about house boundaries. She's like, yeah, I'm a Ravenclaw. I'm going to support Gryffindor because I've got friends in there. Mm. Seeing her room in the seventh one that gave me, me so cry. many emotions. Yeah. I actually cried in that scene yeah. reading the book because it's like Harry's going up the stairs and he's like, I'm looking at a mirror. Mm -hmm. And it's just, it's him, Ron, Hermione, and Neville all framed like and friends. Yeah. And I'm like, you need and a reminder her, when you go up the stairs. Between her, her and her dad's relationship, when you grow up in a family, where it's not a structured thing and if there is, you know, kids with autism or something like some sort of connection of let's be creative and let's learn yeah. through creativity and yeah. her dad is like that and her mom, they experimented and I just, I love how she always is looking at the positive despite lots of traumas in her mm -hmm. past and she's always, she can see Thestrals and yeah. you know, she, but she sees the beauty in them. She's one of those characters that surprises you because you mm -hmm. look at her and you immediately dub her as kind of like, oh, the flighty oh, area weird. one. But she's so wise. She has yeah. so much wisdom in her. And I think it's so cool to and see she, how yeah. her friendship with the gang develops and how integral, but also like cherished and protected she becomes as a part of that group. Mm -hmm. Luna stands up for herself and so you and get she, that And she looks at everything outside of the box, like even in yeah. her like dreamy Luna state, she notices things no one else does. When she was introduced was so important to her character as well in the fifth one mm -hmm. when Harry's going through his angst with mm -hmm. Voldemort you need that connecting balance. to yeah. her Someone and you like have her. less intense. So, yeah, so and she doesn't judge Harry for it. The, she the trio him. are all intense in their own way. Yeah. Like, oh, you yeah. know Ron's chill and lot, like they all are super intense about something yeah. so you need someone who is very like I, this is it's okay if you're going through stuff I'm you're scary in that moment as I am. <laughs> that's not yeah. comforting Luna yeah. but thanks another character that I've been told that I'm a lot of like obviously is Hermione Granger no. <laughs> really? she was somebody who was so smart and very, very interested in her education and wasn't afraid to be that way. She was unapologetically smart. She was smart, very yeah. unapologetically smart, yeah. And I was, and just, she was appropriately so ecstatic about being a witch. And I just, having a character like that, especially when I was young, because I was that girl who was spending my recesses reading books and I was, yeah. you know, it's not that I was like bullied or anything for it, but like I was reading it during class. I was getting in trouble for reading during class. Did I get an A plus in reading in grade five? Hell yes I did. Because I was reading I was reading Potter. The Order of the Phoenix by that yeah. point. You get so many characters in different types of media that you see mm -hmm. who are like, whatever, too cool for I'm, school. Yeah. yeah. That type of thing. And here you have somebody who's so like unapologetic is such a good yeah. word. About, about her education and she wants to be the best that she can be and, and I, especially when I got into university, that it inspired me so much. For what? you, I totally, like, yes. Yeah. I see you as Hermione and everything you say is the same, but for my personal growth, yes. I never identified with Hermione. Okay. Which is funny because like, I love school. I, same as you, I really love learning, I love education, but I think as a personality, she was way more intense than I was. Yeah. yeah. Mind you, I am someone who's like, please just follow the rules. 
And as much as Hermione says it, she never does. She, no, she's the one that she stole from constantly Snape. She's the breaking rules, rule but then being like, Meh, rules. That's but she she, she was like hyper intense about yeah. everything and with spew and mm. like. I mean, as an activist, I get that, but it's just very. She passionate. was so intense. I'm like, girl, chill. Like, enjoy life a little bit. Yeah, I mean, I get chill. that you're in life and death situations a lot of the time, but like, just relax. It's gonna be fine. Mm -hmm. And and that was it. Is I think I w felt forced to identify with her when mm. when the books were first coming out because it's like of the trio which one would you be blah 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 mm. yeah you don't get to see other female characters until later later because mm. early on you're very much following harry who's with ron and hermione, and hermione. <laughs> that's about it that but like even when when harry's not with hermione you never see hermione go off to class you always go with harry and ron mm. to class you and know? yeah and you don't get any inkling of what her life is like or the until girl's dormitory the yeah yeah yeah. Yeah. Girl's dorm. yeah yeah and like you eventually start to see her relationship with Ginny and Fool mm -hmm. and like the two of them and then later on Luna coming in but you don't for see a long time it's that. just the boys club mm -hmm. yeah favorite villain well Shannon has an answer I don't actually know if I do. yeah I know okay Why not? so uh well and like villain is just like any bad guy doesn't yeah, have to be anybody the villain yeah because I just I I enjoy Bellatrix so yes. Yes. much. She is manic and just crazy mm -hmm. evil psychopath and enjoys it and <laughs> like to a point where it's maybe, scarier than Voldemort. Maybe because... this is bad. I really enjoy watching psychopaths who enjoy being evil. Like yeah. the Moriarty's of the world. Yeah. Love, love that is one of my favorite character tropes is when I see a Moriarty type who just gleefully loves mm -hmm. being evil and I feel Bellatrix is that. I think that's something, there's one thing that you get more in the movies because where Helena Bonham Carter she took the perfect. character. Yes. She, that yeah. is true. Is I, she when I, when I picture Bellatrix I'm, hair. I'm picturing Helena Bonham Carter. Yeah. yeah. And Bellatrix doesn't get, I mean she gets some great lines in the book but you don't fully see a character developing but from just Helena Bonham's Carter performance, you see how Bellatrix yeah. is yeah. and came to be, and it just is so wonderful to watch. Mm -hmm. Seeing Bellatrix yep. was yeah, very phenomenal dedicated where to the she character. Took her. Yeah, and, and it's almost to the point where both in the books and the movies is that Bellatrix is a wild card because she's almost scarier than Voldemort in the she sense is. that she enjoys. She's a loose cannon. She enjoys, you cannot predict what she is going to yeah, do. She enjoys being the villain so much and enjoys being evil so much that there's really no purpose for her. It's just being bad for the sake of being yeah. bad. Lucius Malfoy as a villain. Yes. yes. His arc is. Yes. Well, the, the so entire good. Malfoy family arc yes. is like, yeah, one they're of my cohesion, yeah. Because he is, like, again, he's that character he's that, like, you watch him in the second movie, and, like, he's one of the highlights of the second movie. Mm -hmm. is you yes. watch him, and he's Jason just Isaacs. so. So evil, so racist, and, and he so has money, elitist, and, just and oh. comes from a rich family, yeah. and just has a lifestyle, and, and yeah, just like so I'm just here to make your life miserable. Exactly, yeah, and then just seeing his character progress and being like, you know, I am totally here for Voldemort to be in like. What the hell? I did not sign up for yeah, this. Yeah, and I think when he, Voldemort first rose to power, you never had he never had that issue of Malf like a, um, he didn't have anyone to care yeah. about but himself. Yeah, he was yeah. just it was you know what? I'm gonna be here. I'm gonna be powerful. And then later on, yeah, he has Draco that he's like, wait, no, my son. Yeah, this yeah. is putting my family at risk. I no, no. And what they're asking my son to do, which Narcissa takes actual action in. Yes, she enjoyed being rich in a well position and yeah. hey if having Voldemort in charge is gonna make me keep my manner I'm cool with that and yeah. like I think she just she's an entitled woman but she took action for her family whereas I think that's where Lucius fell apart mm -hmm. is yeah. he was so well put together when he yeah. had great status and, and then that slowly yeah. starting to see it unravel when Voldemort doesn't praise him, he starts to get off his high horse a little bit. Yeah. And, uh, uh, and really he's a pathetic so man yeah. in the end. Yeah, he's get off just, or get kicked off. You feel... I think the horse was, like, shot. Yeah. <laughs> like, he was on the ground under the horse, yeah, like, exactly. oh, just had a great no. fall. Mm -hmm. um, in terms of, like, epitome villain where I just, good God, Umbridge is just, I hate her. Yeah. 
in I every way, shape, or form. Like, she's and just that's where very well written. Yes. Mm -hmm. For for me to and maybe it's because the fifth book is so long. I just we are stuck with her for so goddamn long, and, and she just keeps getting more power and is pure evil. She just keeps getting worse. And, and like you see uh, that with the um, the locket not affecting her. You're like, how evil are you? Like, you <laughs> literally have a piece of Voldemort's tool around and your like, neck, Mitch. and you're just like, like, it's like, fine. I'm gonna go to work. Like. Dead. How corrupted is your soul that yeah. that doesn't affect you? And just her being an evil character that is in really no way, shape, or form affiliated with Voldemort is really interesting. Because yes. everyone else has yeah. got some connection, and she's just like, nah, I work for the government. I don't give a shit about you small yeah. peasants. Yeah. How are we for wine? Are we all good for wine? I'm good at the moment. I'm good for it. Oh, okay. Yeah, you We're just, finishing you, this bottle. You chugged. You We're chugged finishing. yours. So. Favorite male character. Neville, my boy. Start talking, girl. Neville, yeah, my boy. I have to excuse myself from Matt Lewis's gorgeous, gorgeous self. So I Neville, know. as a character, and maybe this is where I also identified with him a bit, where he was so shy and so unsure of his place, and he's like, why am I in Gryffindor? I'm not brave. I don't... Yeah. Uh, but has these problems with his his grandmother, and he's, he's constantly apologizing and just doesn't feel he's yeah. good enough for anything. Mm -hmm. And then seeing... And also, well, is it the fifth book where they go to Mungo's? It's the fifth book where they go to Mungo's. Mm -hmm. Like, that wrecked me when they go to the hospital and, and you his see his them. parents. And then you, getting that backstory into his growing up, which you don't get in the first couple books, what he has been through that he could have been the chosen one. Yeah. Yeah. And it's such an unassuming character when you're like, if it wasn't Harry, who would it be? And to be Neville? Yeah. It's like, yeah. really? But then you get him in the last couple of books getting his confidence up. He has this friends group and it's kind of like Luna a little bit where he kind of slowly starts to come into his own. And I think that's another reason why I love The Order of the Phoenix so mm -hmm. much is because you see those characters like Luna and like Neville coming into their own mm -hmm. and even seeing characters like Seamus and Dean who mm -hmm. were initially so like, eh, ah, yeah. come into it and be like, no, you know what? We're going to commit. We're going to be a part I of this. I think that's why Neville connects so much too. Like Harry had Ron, Seamus had Dean. And Neville. then there's Neville. He's so just Neville there. just sort of floated between. He never had that yeah. Yeah. ride or die person with him. Yeah, right? that's like, true. He had plants. Yeah, like he was Neville had plans. Now. Mm -hmm. But that I love is that, you know, they're all into defense against the art, dark arts, which he, he's very good at, but he just wants to be in the greenhouses. Yeah. Dude just wants to herbology all day. He ends up going into a character who's not afraid to be himself and too, which I think is really that, cool. Like outside of the books from um, well, is it in the epilogue that, yeah, he's a professor at Hogwarts. Yeah, yeah. that is he's in the epilogue. Um, but, like, to see him become a teacher yeah. of all things. He wants to educate, he wants to make a difference, and he just wants to do it in a very passive way. Yeah. And I think that's really <laughs> He doesn't important. want to hurt people. Yeah, in the fifth one, I think that's, like, I'm gonna say the fifth one, I see where that came to be, because yeah. throughout the entire series, you just see Neville in class against Snape and just being terrified to hell yeah. because of how Snape treats him, because of how he's constantly both not even in just Snape's class, like in the third one, when he's in defense against the dark arts and Snape just openly is like, he's a terrible student. And then in the fifth one, he has Harry as a teacher and Harry constantly encourages him and is it's like, that you will get there, yeah. keep trying. And yeah, it's that mm -hmm. positive instead of the negative. Mm -hmm. So I think that that became such an important part in Neville's life. That's when he started to hang out with them more that he's like, you know what, I want to do that. Yeah. And he's written off very much as a character in the first couple books, first couple movies too. It's like, why is it always He wins me? them the house cup, yeah. but like, but then he's still kind of like, oh yeah, it's Neville. He's and that clumsy you know, kid. Yeah. He's losing his frog everywhere. Like, he's, he's yeah. that guy. And then... He's that guy. He's, that, he's, that, he's just, just that spare dude all the time. <laughs> yeah, like you get that more in the books too, because in the movies, in the fourth one, Neville's the one that gives Harry the gilly weed. Yes, mm. and there, but in the books, that's Dobby. Yeah, yeah. So Neville's given all of De Dobby's parts. Yeah, so like and small the, changes that I kind of like because it gives yeah. him a bit more. Of a it character does, and movies. yes, and he needed that more of a character. But I think you see more of his progression in the books without mm -hmm. that because oh, for sure. he was There's never just more time as, too. There, yeah. So I understand why they didn't have the whole house elf. Mm -hmm. arc yeah. in the movie that made sense to get rid of yeah. but yeah because of that you see Neville's arc quicker yeah 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 and just mm, Neville <laughs> so then another <laughs> male <laughs> character who I always yeah. find is interesting so interesting yes is Dumbledore and it's because 
you get this perception of him being this professor throughout the entire book series and that's what he is that's what he is that's what he is but i think he's my favorite because you find out that he is not perfect at he all is he is the furthest up. thing from it and, and you don't see that until you meet Avatar. yeah and it's like and you know you finish a series feeling so conflicted about this character because you're like we have we grew up like, with harry like harry we... you've grown up with with him and you've grown As to love mentor. him and trust him yeah. And then to have that suddenly all change and be like, he's he's a real human being. He had a life before this and there's mm -hmm. you know, and a very a very messed up life before mm -hmm. this too. So he's just someone who I'm so looking forward to Fantastic Beasts yes. because you get to see him yeah. not as a prof. You learn how complex it yeah. was, his also his love for his family and then also Grindelwald and then that trauma that would have happened to him. And yeah. the years that followed to the Battle of 1945, but then also the years that followed that, where he's just trying to redeem himself yeah. and how do I fix what I mm -hmm. royally screwed up in my 20s or whatever. Yeah. And yeah. he's just. He, it's so a lifetime of, of um, public false. service. Yeah. yeah. I'm going to be really interested to see how they explore that. Yeah. In the future movies, and not only that, but with the whole, you know, after the book's being released, it's like, by the way, Dumbledore's gay, and seeing, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm so looking forward to, I and know. hoping and wishing that J.K. Rowling addresses that. That's so integral to his character, and that's something that... That was added on as an after... Like, yeah. I'm sure J.K. Really, Rowling yeah. had it in the whole series, but to the public, it was an afterthought mm -hmm. of that... It's not even in the epilogue. It's not in his biography. There's no mention of it. The biography then, would have been the perfect place exactly, to put that Exactly, because in. it's rumored, yeah. so you could totally just say something. Like, rumored relationship. So and it's like, be because she was like, oh, by the way, that's what changed everyone's perspective, but mm -hmm. it has nothing... If you just read the books, you would you not know, know that. Yeah. You, someone could look at it from a queer perspective with queer theory, but you wouldn't be... There's nothing that leads you to yeah. that. Harry is just yes. the one yeah. so much of a pedestal yeah. that he's like, yes. this is my mentor. He is and so he's, great. He's so perfect. You don't know anything you about your teachers when you're 15. No, yeah, and you so have to true. know all the steps he took to get to that pedestal moment, if mm -hmm. you will. Mm -hmm. And it's it's a very long haul that he takes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, you. Any yeah. male characters male, that are like, here Neville, we go. Dumbledore. <laughs> um, I don't know. I really like Draco. Yeah. He is interesting. Well, it's like Lucius. Like, I really like him, like, obviously I'm a Slytherin, so, like, you don't see a lot of the Slytherin characters at all. You That's see, true, you really yeah. don't. They're mean, they're rude, they're everything just wrong with Slytherin, so you get that prejudice against the house. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, with... Proud Slytherin here. <laughs> But, but yeah, yeah, and so with Draco, you see that character arc of him yep. changing, like, mm -hmm. in the first one, just blatantly being mean, like, oh, you don't want to be my friend, therefore I'm going to be your enemy. But I think that's not even fully Slytherin, that's his family. That is his that, family. Uh, with, and with yes, his and parents, so you get that, A, he has such entitlement because of his lifestyle, and B, that he, they, he's been told by his parents that, it's like, you don't associate with half-bloods mm -hmm. and you need to make the most powerful friends and yeah. he tries that with Harry and then when Harry turns him down he's like well now you're an enemy of me <laughs> yeah she's not that like don't like so dramatic an enemy. I like Draco just because you see that arc you see that wait maybe my family isn't mm -hmm. perfect well, it's wait like, maybe I am jealous of Harry's yeah. I love that and... I think in the Half Blood Prince book, that's one of yes. my favorite things. The, the arc is his arc the, in the book. The fall is really of like, Draco oh, Malfoy yeah. is he starts at being like, I've been given this test of Voldemort. I'm I am a fave so of Voldemort. Great. I'm a Death Eater now. Look at my awesome test. <laughs> and then seeing him <laughs> increasingly oh, shit. get Just, frustrated yeah. and stupid. He's sixteen. Dude doesn't know how to kill a Dumbledore. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I am a 16 yeah. year old trying to commit murder. There's no <laughs> manual for this shit. I'm like, I don't know, here's a possessed necklace. I guess that's gonna do a thing. Here, have some wine, Dumbledore. Yeah, I don't know. Just... Mead. 
And like, yeah. dude's trying his best. He doesn't know dick all about murdering <laughs> people. <laughs> it's just so much then, placed on him. Yeah. And you see all of it placed I on love, Harry. I love then, how it gets to him. And then again, the movies, Tom Felton did a great job in that scene where it's like he's got Dumbledore cornered yeah. and the break where he's like, I can't, I can't, mm -hmm. I can't do this. And yeah. He doesn't want to be and in I this anymore. I do like how he is very much a coward. I, like, I think that's an amazing aspect to have, especially in a Slytherin. I do think the cowardice is a really interesting mm -hmm. character fault to have in a Slytherin. Right? Like, you have these super yeah. ambitious characters that will do any, like, they're told that they will do anything to get into that power to walk over these people, and then you have this person who's put into Slytherin who's terrified. Just somebody who... It's, yeah. As a youngster, was just so confident, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, so it's, mm -hmm. yeah it's you so see that backwards see that. trend, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. right? Like that. The opposite of Neville. Yeah, yeah. basically. There's just this weird. Like the metal that, like, path. Yeah. Is there a character you felt differently about in the movies? Let's get Ginny out of the way. I was right gonna now. feel like <laughs> Ginny is such an easy. Yeah, answer. yeah. That's, uh, this is one that's just yeah. There we go. The one that's just so frequently yeah, discussed. So yeah. We all know our feels about movie Ginny. Book versus Ginny, book yay! Ginny. Movie book Ginny. Ginny, what? Sorry. Oh shit, Bonnie. Bonnie, Bonnie right. right. You are a great person. And I did. And I'm, they did not give you no, shit. No, they did. Yeah, it was anything. a fault of the writing. Not yeah, the fault of the it was I not liked, Bonnie Wright because I liked. Bonnie Wright as Ginny. And like the sixth oh, one, you amazing. almost got it! Like when she's on the Quidditch field, you're like, she's dang so girl! Cool. And then a Harry and, then and it Ginny. Just kinda, just you know, yeah, fun. Harry and Ginny was just, there was just no chemistry between oh. them. Anywho, Ginny. Yeah. Ginny. Sorry. Ginny. 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 Mm. Uh, Peter Pettigrew, they made him look like a rat. And I mean, that's partially Alfonso Curon's direction of being like weird. Yeah. But I pick, I did not picture him like that when I read the books, and I felt almost bad. He's a skyvy dickhead, like, he's, he causes all the problems in leading up to the entire series. But I felt bad for him in the books, and like, when he dies by his own hand, like, I'm just like, dude, he's a coward by his own, his own faults. I felt bad, for, I still hate him, but yeah. I felt bad for him because I'm like, your life could have turned out so differently, so but you're just so scared of life. Yeah. But and the I movies, think that's what I just hats didn't on. give a shit about yeah. him. And his death, too. Like, yeah. Not yeah. even Did a he, thing. He doesn't even die. Like, no. it's just. He goes down and they go boink! And they like, yeah. I don't that's know, such... I know if they knock him down. Yeah, I don't know. Like, that's such an integral part to his character. He dies and by they, his own hand. And they just totally. Yeah. He shows remorse and he gets to that stage where he's like, oh, come on. Like, maybe I should do the right thing for once. And his hand's like. <laughs> No. He was like, bitch, please. Yeah. Yeah. So um, like, no. And then he and then he dies. Yeah, he yeah, does. He dies. he dies by his own hand. And they don't show that in the movies. They're just like, whatever. The character you felt differently about mm -hmm. the movies. Aside from Jimmy. <laughs> Aside from Jimmy. <laughs> Tonks. Oh my god, Tonks. yes. Tonks. I have so got many it. feelings. Ugh. I tonks. loved Book Tonks. Yeah. Oh my God. Book Tonks is super badass, punky, just 90s grunge. She is that cool she chick is. that you aspire she's to like, be. And she's, and she's like, Hufflepuff, like, too. She's like that cool babysitter that's like... <laughs> she's not the cool she aunt, is, she's the cool when babysitter. When you're little and like, you have a 16-year-old babysitter and she's just like hella chill about everything and is like, yeah, don't need to she go She like bed. lets you stay up and watch yeah. TV. Yeah. And like, yeah. R-rated movies, but then she also like, educates you. She's so much younger than the other members of the Order of the Phoenix. Yeah, and she's, she is just graduated. She's trying constantly, but she's also in this weird moral situation. And then you go through her mousy period, and yeah. then her de and her depression, and then her and Lupin is such an interesting it part really of the plot. Is. Mm -hmm. And then in the movies, oh. the actual <laughs> writing and the costume just kills yeah. her. So you have this amazing character that's just like, today I'm gonna be blue. Today I'm gonna be which is like, with with her personality, like, you get that sense in the book, mm -hmm. and that is why it's such a difference when she becomes mousy in the book, because yeah. you're like, what happened to your super yeah. fun, fl like, flamboyant side? She's just gray and, and sunken and all this stuff, but 
in the movies you don't really get that giant difference in her personality. No, it's just happening. all of a sudden she is now at this point. Mm -hmm. You di you don't see yeah. the transition to that point. Yeah, and the same with like Dean and Sheamus. They hit the main points of their character in the movies and do what they can with this short. <laughs> the the I enjoyed what they were couple. Yeah. I enjoyed what they were able to do yeah. with the fact that Dean and Thomas don't really have a full storyline. No. no. And he was Dean and Thomas? <laughs> Dean and Thomas. <laughs> Dean and Sheamus. <laughs> and they're the two best friends that anybody could have. <laughs> this is funny. Yeah. yeah. I just want to come back in the fifth so that Sheamus. Just so Sheamus could get mad at them. Just yell at <laughs> Harry. Which was a great scene. He's such a good actor. He's such a good actor. I didn't feel really bad. I will Google it. There. And then what's his face? Who I Alf, Alpha Alfie 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 who's Yuck. Dean? Yes, is how to get away with murder. A I'm great yeah. actor. <laughs> Friggin' so good. Uh, it's and his movie. and his cameo in Sherlock. Yes, Babe got to be butt naked. But that's not what we cared about. <laughs> I'm sorry. He's such a good actor. What? 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 Okay, pause to look up actor names. <laughs> I got it. Devin Murray. Devin Murray. Devin Murray. <laughs> Cool. Yes. He's a great dude. Devin Murray, you were awesome. I'm so sorry we forgot your name. <laughs> You're so cool. But you are amazing. You I'm sorry. Boo! Revolution's imminent. What are you still for? If you stand for nothing, Burr, what do you fall for? Who are you? Who are you? Who are you? Who, who is this kid? What's he gonna do? So the camera died. So we are back. With What's next? If which house was your first gut feeling that you'd be a part of? Hufflepuff. Hufflepuff? Really? Really? I was reading them when I was a lot younger. Ha! Hufflepuff. But like, so was I, but I was also an impressionable youth. So I always thought I'd be like, Gryffindor! Gryffindor's the good house! That's what I want to be in! And I think it was the introduction of Luna that made All me right. start thinking about what I would actually be and then I started kind of seeing it from a different perspective. And at Ravenclaw wasn't just the smart people. It was also, you get interested, you get introduced to a bunch of different facets of each house. Mm. With Beyond Measure, it wasn't so much that like, Ravenclaw's the smart house, blah, 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 blah. But I was like, the wit is what got me mm -hmm. right off the bat that I was like, there's a active use of your brain that is just constantly thinking, whether it be about humor, whether it be about science or what arts yeah. or whatever that I was like wit is an integral part of me even as an impressionable youth. Mm -hmm. But so, see but see for me as an impressionable youth it was always like Gryffindor's the good house, Slytherin yeah. is the bad house. So but I, I think I was very much Gryffindor. I was shy and I was just like oh god I would hate everything about being in Gryffindor. Yeah, yeah for me for Hufflepuff yeah. I just I always felt like the outsider. Yeah. I always felt like the person that never fit in. Yeah. yeah. And yeah, Hufflepuff was just where people were shooed to. So I'm like, I belong to the house that doesn't fit anymore. I will say I was one of those people that was like, whatever, Hufflepuff for a while. Yeah. Like, and like, like, but until and characters so got was introduced. I. Yeah. But that's where I felt like I belonged because I moved around so much and I'm like, I don't have True. any friends. So I feel like I just belong that's on the so outside looking in. Yeah. yeah. And I feel like that, like, like that greatly reflects like who we were as young mm -hmm. kids. It's like, yeah. when I was in elementary school, the thing that I desperately wanted to do was fit in with everyone. So I was like, I would be Gryffindor because that's what everyone did. I yeah. wanted to be a Gryffindor. I was super intimidated by that. Yeah, whereas, whereas I was just like, I can't. And I think because yeah. that's what I aspired to be. But then as I grew up and very much figured out who I was and that I didn't want to be that person, mm -hmm. and that's when I started to find my way into to to Ravenclaw. <laughs> which leads us to our next question. Which house were you actually sorted into on Pottermore? Hmm, I don't, I don't quite know, guys. Good. I'm, I'm drawing Good. a blank. I think, I think I got myself hurt. <laughs> Which class at Hogwarts would be your favorite? Charms. Yeah. Either charms or defense against the dark arts for me. Charms, care of magical creatures, not taught by Hagrid. Sorry, Hagrid, but yeah. Sorry, but I don't want to die, but Top I genuinely love Sorry, magical dude. creatures, but charms. Yeah. Charms because it's fun, transfiguration because of the um, mm -hmm. skill that you need to be able to do the class. Yes, Defense Against the Dark Arts taught by Lupin. Okay. Good. Yes. We're good. Yes. Excellent. We have our first semester lined up. <laughs> We're ready to go. Which character did we not do this already? We Which character didn't. do you relate most to? I you think very okay, much we can, we can, Yeah. I did that with Hermione. Hermione. Uh, it's a cross between Luna and Charlie. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
I was like, you don't not, see like, much of Charlie, Hermione. but from what we got of Charlie, I could see myself as a Charlie. Yeah, I could see you as a Charlie. Yeah. I never found a character that I identified with that much. Because, mm-hmm. And I think that's because I was always a Slytherin, and the Slytherins were, were portrayed demonized so yeah, terribly that I'm like, no, I am that character, I am that person, but I'm not evil. Yep. So I struggled with finding a character I identified with. Hmm. Okay. Slytherins get a bad rap. And I don't think we should have one. Nah. Oh, I'm getting into the thing I'm hitting every single time. No, it's too big. Is it so? It's not. It's not. You're yeah. If you could own one of the three hollows, which would it be? Because they're all being clawed. We ran out of wine a while ago. Invisibility clawed. And you said the Elder Wand? The Elder Wand. I would probably go with the cloak as well, only because the books did a very good job of scaring us off from the resur- resurrection. Yeah, song. they did a very good job. Do not want that. Yeah. Yeah. No, but yeah, the wand expression, but gives you a giant target on your face. <laughs> it does, but people Dumbledore, murder you. But yes, but Dumbledore carried the wand for so long. True. I know. that target on his back, and I think, and I and think that's my slither inside coming out, where I'm like, I. I you could be sneaky with it. Yeah. I, mean, I don't want that much power. I just want to hide. And I, no, I don't. <laughs> personally, I don't want that much power, but I don't want somebody else to have that much power either. So ah, I would rather have good perspective. that. There we go. Good the pers- keeper of the Elder Wand. That's I would want. That's a good one. You're doing good. people a service. And that's, um, I, I think very much what Hermione says is that when, or when Hermione says she would want the cloak, and then I think it's Ron or somebody that points mm-hmm. out that like, well, yeah, but that's what the book says you should take mm-hmm. is the cloak. Yeah. Like they point that out, yeah. and I think that's very telling. So I think each of them have their pros, each of them mm-hmm. have their cons, but I think the Hollows on a whole scare me. So no, I don't. I, yes, and I if, think the books were very good if job the of whole, away from that. But. Yeah, if the whole thing was, I'd just rather not no. deal with the Hollows at all. Like seeing the kids using the invisibility cloak, I was like, yeah, that'd be so yes. cool. Yeah. But that would that. be, but I appreciated Fred and George's, they stole the map, so they were able to do the exact same things, more or less, with just the map. True. So, how I am very much on the wand. We've agreed that the hollows are creepy. She's out of it on the still wand. The wand. She would just, choose the invisibility but cloak. But really, not And right. I'm just kind of like, I don't know. Yeah. Is there any aspect of the books you'd want to change? The epilogue was. for me. I honestly yeah. I think I would have rather there not be an epilogue. I don't know. Honestly. I, I'm just genuinely conflicted on my yeah. I still, to this day, it's been over ten oh god, it's been ten years. Shut up. It's been over Anywho, it's been ten years and I still don't fully know my feelings on the epilogue. No. Um like the kids' names, like get the kids' out. names, okay. It's awful. Okay. The 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 current the Sequence of events that happened in the epilogue where it's King's Cross, that I get it. It's yeah. the symbolic. I liked the it's setup like bringing and the back scenery. to the beginning. Yeah. But the goddamn kids' names. Oh my god. JK. You can what? do better. I think I would have rather there just be nothing at all and just have it oh, end but, with the yeah. three there. And then, if anything, I feel like having the cursed child come along, it would have been more. More exciting in that regard. I to think. be like, what did they all do yeah, with their lives? Yeah, what what happened? Rather than yeah. be. I know. Yeah, I know. I liked that. I needed the sense of closure, but also. Yeah, like I liked that they had that whole. You knew they had a life beyond their school. Yeah. I liked that you got to see that they each had a family. Why would you name your kid after Snape? I I will not get over that. Like, don't get me wrong. I understand Snape's intentions, but he was a terrible. Yeah. <laughs> Albus Severus. Dumbledore is a fucked up character. The Severus two of them are. The like poor kid just... is cursed from the beginning. Yeah, and it's, yeah, so just the yeah. epilogue. I can't say too much about the cursed child because I haven't read it. Is I, and I, Shannon and I are here. Yeah, like, there we go. Is that I was somebody who, when I, like, you know, you read the epilogue and you get introduced to these characters, but they're not given any story. Like, I remember writing a fan fiction on these characters. I totally wrote a fan fiction. I did. But. It, it was just one of those things where, like, you kind of came up with your own stories because it was just left there for so long. So you get all of these people that are writing these stories and thinking of their own thing, and then you're being told that yep. this is what's happening now yep. in the series, and it's totally, it might be totally different than yep. what I envisioned. No, I totally get that. Else I totally get that. Yeah. So you've, you know, it's been left open ended for so long, and then to be told this is how things are, it's kind of like snap. Yeah. I, I sub said it as a good fan fiction. Yeah. Yeah, that's and the way. With I that in mind, I was totally cool with it. Yeah. 
Yeah, and like reading it in you have to keep that mind while you read it. Just yeah. pretty much okay. knowing that and like I enjoyed it. Oh, so did I. Don't get me wrong. I laughed and cried. It's it was great. One, but it's one head canoned interpretation of what happens. Read it. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Maybe more on the Dementors, and I know that's gonna sound mm-hmm. weird, but like, because they were modeled after the idea of depression. Yeah. And so that I think very interesting. I think that aspect of them being interesting and never seeing that you can get over depression, you can move on from depression, you can get out of depression, and never seeing a Dementor move on from that, I think it would be a cool aspect of it to be like, knowing, after knowing that they were modeled on depression, never seeing the other side of it. Mm -hmm. I think that would have been a cool thing to have. I think, we mentioned this earlier, but to knowing that Dumbledore is gay now, would have liked to have that incorporated in that biography yeah. or something, even just one line, yeah. just to bring it to the character's attention that, huh, okay, when they're learning more about Dumbledore's past. I get it, not going into his personal life through the most of the books, because he's a profession, he's their professor, he's their mm-hmm. mentor, yeah. but when you start delving into his younger life, yeah. it felt like pandering when, I know it wasn't, but it felt like pandering when J.K. Rowling was like, oh, by the way, he's gay, yeah. in a panel. Because it was right there, but it never actually It didn't was quite addressed. get so there. And I'm like, if yeah. you are going to actually do a service to the LGBTQ community and be like, hey, I have a gay character in my series. Don't make it sound like an so. Yeah. Yeah. And, and maybe Fantastic Beasts will do that, but it just, that's one thing. Until that now, point, yeah. I didn't have a clue until then, so I wouldn't have changed it, but knowing now, I'm like, it could have just been a simple throw it in there so at least there's an indication that just, someone could yeah. read so, it to. Yeah, and even just having that mention, you don't need to have a relationship with Dumbledore. You don't need no. to just go into the just yeah. that, that just have knowledge of it to, within the box. Yeah, acknowledge it. Yeah. Hey, Jude, <laughs> don't make it bad. That's all I'm going to say. Okay. That was so appropriate. Take a sad plot and and make make it better. (laughs) So, we are on to the rapid fire round. (laughs) We're just gonna gonna read read things and we're gonna go bleh. gonna be the answer. So, would you rather wash Snape's hair or spend a day listening to Lockhart rant about himself? (laughs) Lockhart rant. Oh my god, I would laugh for hours. I would wash Snape's hair. Entertainment sake, <laughs> not being actually invested in Lockhart, but just entertainment sake. <laughs> I would be highly entertained. I just would not want to touch the greasy talk. hair. I suck at small Wait, talk. Wait, was it listening? Wanna... Listening well, to Lockhart? Spend a day listening to Lockhart. Okay, I don't actually himself. have to interact with him. I can yeah, just sit and listen. Fine. I could just yeah, sit yeah. there and just like. But what? Snape wash. Snape wash hair. <laughs> I talk about with some cleansing shampoo, you know? Yeah. Some dry shampoo even. Yeah. Just yeah I just would not want to. They were. It was described so terribly. I don't want to touch that. Poof going yeah, on. Get some volume, volume up in there. Yeah, I would listen to Walker. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Would you rather duel an elated Bellatrix or an angry Molly? Oh no. I oh, think Molly. I think I would go with Molly. I'm just more scared Bellatrix would kill me. Yeah. And the lated Bellatrix means you're not getting out of that alive. No. Whereas Molly can like horribly disfigure you. In Lester Bellatrix, and then which, yes, but she I kill think, you. But Molly has that mother, like, that maternal like, instinct that she would be like, you're a terrible child, and she'd be standing there, and she'd have her wand, and you'd be like, please, with you, please, but please don't Her hurt first me. instinct is not to kill, whereas I think Bellatrix's is, is, so, so I'm going Molly. with Molly. Would you rather travel to Hogwarts via Hogwarts Express or flying car? Hogwarts, Hogwarts Express. Express. I love trains. I love trolleys. <laughs> <laughs> I love... <laughs> <laughs> Carts with sweets on them. <laughs> Anything from the trolley? Yeah, this girl. Always here for snacks. <laughs> Would you rather kiss Voldemort or give Umbridge a bubble bath? Oh, I thought you were going to say something very bath. different there. I would do the bubble bath bubble or a bath. bath. I mean, I hate the bitch, but... Yeah. So do I, As long as I don't have to... Like, if I can just, like, put the bubbles in the bubble bath and just, like, like slowly, fun. like, lead her yeah. with, like, a trail of cats. Voldemort doesn't want you to kiss him Yeah, anyways. I know. And that's just gross. Like, I think... I think J.K. Rowling like, has done a good enough job with the character that, like, you wouldn't want any yeah. of it. No. No. 
Would you rather ride a hippogriff or ride a firebolt? Firebolt. Hippogriff? Firebolt? Hippogriff would be infinitely more dangerous, but it would be such a cool experience, I think. I feel more secure, like, riding a horse, which is like a hippogriff than a stick. So... But it's the world's fastest route. <laughs> Guys, we finally made it. We're to the end. We started at 11.30 and it is 1.53 right now. So I've got to edit the shit out of this and make a video that is at least watchable Yeah, this is going to be like three videos. This was super informative. So yes. It was fun. Yes. I liked We learned this. a lot and within that time. We drank an entire bottle. We downed this. We're on our second bowl of popcorn. Serious passed out ages Serious ago. passed out. My cat left us so long ago. <laughs> Kitty. Yeah, he, he quit. If you made it through this whole thing, <laughs> bless you. Love you. Bless Love you. you. Thank you guys for being Yay. here and watching. Also, special shout out to Megs. I'll put her channel down below. She was the one who initially did a Harry Potter video, which inspired me to actually do this video yeah. with my two Harry Potter yeah. friends. On that note, on that note, mischief managed. <laughs>